So if you want to know what's coming to the next Photoshop, you should download Photoshop Beta. Here you can try out the new features Photoshop has, and these will probably be available in the next Photoshop version. So let's not waste time and get into these new features. All right, the first one is we now have Firefly 3 in Adobe Photoshop. All right, into Photoshop Beta, I created a new document it's just an empty document and here you can see I use 2048 pixels. That's what we can use now. So let's go to OK and here you can see we can use generate image. This screen pops up and here we can generate with Firefly 3. Now here you can describe the image you want. Here you can get some inspiration. So for instance, if you like one of these styles, you can just click on that and the text will come here. And you can just copy that and adjust it to your own liking. Now we can also select art as a content or just a photo. So this is your own preference or you can use reference images. So also if you like one of these styles, just click on that one and it's going to use this as a reference, right? So let's go to effects. Let's first write something. So let's say for instance, I want to have a tiger walking through New York city and I'm going to go to effects here and I don't want to have fantasy. I want to have like something realistic. So here we have all these kind of different effects that we can apply to the image and you can just select multiples of these. So I just want to have it hyper realistic for now and let's generate this with Firefly 3. All right, this is the image it generated. Here you can see different variations and I have to say this looks really good compared to what we had before. This is a major improvement in the quality. It looks really realistic. Now, when we click on this icon here, I can change this. So if I go to effects here, and for instance, I want to have a fish eye effect to this photo. It's going to generate a new one with a fish eye. So let's generate this again. And now I'm going to use the fish eye effect. The results that are in and look how cool that looks. That looks really realistic. I can't even tell that this is generated with AI. It looks like a real photo. The next one is a better generated fill. All right, so I'm going to use this photo as an example. And let's say, for instance, I want to select this area here from the couch and I want to add something to this area. So when I click on generate the fill, I can write what I want. So let's say I want to add a panda to this area and then I'm just going to click on generate. So this is what it generated and you can see this one doesn't look good but this one looks really realistic and we also have a third one and this one kind of goes into the couch not what i wanted but this one looks really good so i like this one and you can generate more if you want to but i think this one looks pretty realistic to compare to what we had before in photoshop this is a major improvement of what it does now we can now enhance details of our generated film now, when you like an image, you can zoom in on the image. And you can see the quality is not that super good. So what we can do now is we have this option here to increase the quality. So it's not really increasing the quality. It's just enhancing the details as it mentioned here. And when you click on this one, it will make the quality better. So you can see here when I press Ctrl Z, let me show you here. You can see all those pixels and now let's toggle forward. You can see it gets a bit better quality. So it's kind of a little hack to make the quality of your generative images slightly better than they are. We now also have generate similar. Now, when you like an image, you can also generate similar images. When we go here and when we click these three dots here, we can generate similar. And this is going to generate a similar image to your image that you added to your image, right? So when you like something, just click generate similar to get similar variations of that generation. And I can see it kind of makes similar images and these look pretty good. Also, we can now remove backgrounds and generate backgrounds. All right. For the next feature, I'm going to use this image as an example. And you can see here we can remove background. So when I click on this, Photoshop is going to automatically remove the background. Now, we also have generate background here and here we can generate a background. You can either write something here or you can just click generate and it's going to generate a random background. So let's say I want to generate a background like a beach and I'm just going to click on generate. 
Now I just have to wait until this is done and it will generate this background with AI. And here is the result. You can see here we have different variations again and this looks pretty realistic to me. So try this out, try your own background, see if you can get awesome images with this function. We can generate more if we want to, but I think these look already pretty good. We now also have a bunch of adjustment brushes. When we go to the brushes here, we have the adjustment brush tool. And here with, for the adjustments, we can now select different kind of adjustments. So what it actually does is it just creates an adjustment layer on top of your layer. So let's say for instance, I want to add curves. And when I brush some areas like here, you can see it adds a adjustment layer here. You can move this up. And now we can just simply take these points and move them around to change this. Now, this is actually just the same as just adding an adjustment layer when you click here, adding curves, but this probably makes it easier for beginners to kind of add this effect without thinking about what they need to do here. We can now use reference image to generate a fill. Now, let's say I want to add a car in this photo. So I will just select this area first and then I click on generate a fill. And let's say I want to add a Lamborghini, but I want to make sure it's the one I have in my photos. So I'm going to choose image here and I'm going to select the Lamborghini I have. So for instance, I want to have this one with this wrap. I'm just going to use this as a reference and then I'm going to click on generate. All right. These are the images it generated. You can see it kind of took the wrap from the other car, but this doesn't look like a Lamborghini. I think this looks more like a Lotus. So this definitely needs some improvements, but the idea is good. And I think maybe when they release this in the Photoshop version, it's going to get better. But for now, I probably skip this idea to use this, but I think maybe in the future we get improvements. We now have a font browser, which has a huge library of fonts. All right, now the last feature that I have is when we add text. So let's say I'm just gonna write a text here. And when we have this text here, we can go to the fonts. Let's go to the fonts here. We have now more fonts. And here you have a lot of fonts from Adobe that you can use. So these are my fonts and more fonts are the fonts that are actually not installed on my computer. They are from Adobe and we can all use those fonts. So if you don't have enough fonts, you have now a big library of fonts. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of these videos. Until then, catch you on the next one.